In this Jasmine uh, workshop exercise, we'll be looking at interactive computing on a SI server. The scenario is this. I need to do some random sampling of my data set to estimate the distribution of sample mean. I will need to use the random number generation function from the uh, NumPy library. And also want to check if the NumPy array dot um, has any multi-threading before implementing it in my code. The objectives are these. Uh, by the end of the exercise, I'll be able to execute a computing task on the side machine from the command line, monitor the CPU resources and memory of my task, understand the software environment, become aware of implicit multi-threading, and learn about the capability and limitation of the side server. What are the resources required on the Jasmine side? Uh, the site analysis servers are listed here. Group workspace area is available where the, most of the codes and scripts are there, but when they are provided. Also, the course materials are all provided in the repository in the GitHub, plus the documentation. From the local uh, uh, resources, uh, users should need to have a, uh, the um, credential to access Jasmine and a termin uh, terminal application with a valid login to the um, side machines and access to the group workspace. Um, an introduction to the SI server, what are they? So SI servers are machines are designated for interactive uh, compute and also for test and development um, and are useful for um, co uh, processing or anal uh, analyze, analyzing data in group workspace, see the archive or user home directory. The, in um, in terms of type, there are two types. They are the generic or standard side machines. Um, they are in, um, and they are classified into virtual and physical. There are four virtual machines in total with eight core and thirty two gigabytes of memory, and three physical machines with high high memory and mini processor. Um, example of 48 cores. The second type of, um, of size servers are provided via, uh, via the tenancy uh, tenancies and these are um, uh, community-based um, uh, uh, size server for a certain group of people with similar workflow. So the size um, size servers, the generic ones, are available or are discoverable from the login, uh, login machines and um, uh, from, the, from the login machine. Uh, this is an, um, an um, overview of the Jasmine services uh, showing uh, on the left the interactive compute uh, area which is the shared services by uh, for all uh, users and showing the um, size server on the left side and the, the managed, uh, managed tenancies. Now, for the software, uh, for the software and the modules, uh, the software environment available on all Jasmine size servers um, are just cl are classified in this order by uh, by their uh, um, order of being commonly used is uh, JASB, which is an environment that provides access to Python and non-Python packages. Jasmine size is intended as a supplement to JASB. Um, and also some other additional software packages provided under the app Jasmine and, uh, com and the additional tools for compiling and building software. Uh, these um, software environments are um, enabled via the uh, module system, which allow users to um, um, modify dynamically the environment and also ma manage different versions of the software. So the uh, the module or environment systems uh, works uh, by um, uh, calling or uh, running the command module with the different names of the software that um, you want to enable, and these are here the list of the um, important uh, options to the module to see what's available, what is loaded, how to remove, and how to add the module. Now the tasks. Um, um, uh, for this exercise are uh, grouped here in five tasks. Um, uh, so the first task is starting point. You should be on the login node and then decide which size server has less 
let's, uh, let's load and connect to it, execute a Python script, monitor the resources used by this script, make some changes, edit, change the input value, rerun it again, and then do some testing of the second example for, uh, if, for multi-threading and disable it if possible. Now the first task, um, the login, um, a, we were encouraged to launch two terminal session on the login node and connect to the same SAR server because that will allow you to have one terminal for compute and the other one for monitoring. The second task is um, to execute a f the first Python example script which is provided. So you have to copy this script into your home directory, um, explore the available module, you, uh, activate the module Jaspi because we need this module to run this script, and then execute the uh, Python script. Um, and uh, on the t monitoring window, check the PID, the state, the memory, and CPU usage, and note those values. Uh, in parallel to the to the compute, when you're running computing, you need to do the monitoring. So this this is just to show you the what what are the utilities uh, available there to monitor uh, the processes or to monitor the resources of your task. Is the Linux utility top minus followed with your username um, uh, minus your user so you you username. So this shows you all the processes that are owned by you. You can also run top without any argument and this will sort all processes per CPU usage. And to exit the top because it's an interactive uh, uh, command utility, it will be running uh, all the time so you just need to press the letter Q on the keyboard. There's another utility that is also um, uh, useful to know uh, which is listed here uh, is the proce process status which is PS and you can use that this as well. Um, the, then you need to make some edits um, by changing the input value uh, of the number of random numbers. So you can open. So you need to open the text edit. The you need to choose a text editor, uh, whether Vim or Vmac. Open the scripts, make uh, change the value assigned to the random number variable in the run, and then save the file and exit. Then rerun the rerun the scripts and monitor the resources and see if there is a difference in the resources compute consumed for this script compared to the first one. Then the last um, the last section of the task is to test uh, for potential multi-threading. So you need to copy the, the second example script, um, which is dot product to array dot pi into your work, working uh, current working home directory, home directory. Um, execute the, the script and uh, monitor the um, resources. For this time, you need to use the the, the option um, h which will uh, uh, display if there is any threading. So check and see if there is any threads and uh, then set the um, environment variable which is an OpenMP standard OMP num thread to one from the command line by doing an export as shown here, then rerun the script, check the mon and monitor the resources and find out if this has disabled um, the uh, the threads. There's another way to in uh, to con to in implement this variable is within the within the Python script by incrementing this line, which is set to two. So do this change, increment this line, save the file, and rerun it, and see what's what you can how many threads are spawned this time. So this will bring you to the next. Uh, um, uh, slide which is the questions that we added in the in the uh, in this exercise so these are um, if if you if you manage to go through the different five section of the task then um, it, it could could um, try to test your knowledge and understanding by looking at these questions so these questions in general are about um, um, how to let how is there a limit on number of processes uh, what are the software available um, how do you switch between different versions of software um, and whether you can install software on Jasmine. So um, if you have tried the task and the um, exercise then so um, we invite you next to, to watch the second video.
which gives a demonstration of the recommended uh, method, also discuss the alternative and best practice and give the solution to the test uh, questions. Thank you.